My name is Leo Bickford. I'm a grandfather of the boy <coughs> taking my deposition. <laughs> and I was born in Waverly, Kansas on October 24th, 1932. And I'm 81 years old. I'm no spring chicken. <laughs> We moved to Jackson County and I'm going to say probably about 1934 mm -hmm. and we lived west of Holton, Kansas. My father bought a farm there which Probably two years or so later, he lost that farm because it was in the bad years. There's 13 total, total myself, there's 13 kids in my family. I was number nine. We was always wanting to scrap. You love scrapping. You know what scrapping is? That's when you get in a fight. Me and my younger brother, we're always scrapping. We didn't care how big, how little they were. We was always one big fight. When I was a kid growing up, I was, I can't remember when my dad got, bought this hay baler, had to poke wires back through from one side to the other side of that baler. So I could tie that bale up. And I did that for like 50 cents a day. That's one job us kids always did. We always helped around with the milking, feeding the calves, feeding the hogs, feeding chickens. and still tried to keep up with the farm life. What was your mom like? She was a wonderful cook. We got her hind end spanked every once in a while. Well, I bought them. You more than others? Yeah, probably. We walked to school every day, which is a good half a mile or so. And <clears throat> I quit school because I thought I knew more of a teacher. And that's when I joined the Marine Corps for four years. I went in at 17 and I took my basic training in San Diego, California. And that first year I was out of basic, I went to Camp Joseph H. Pendleton. I went to Sassy Pan. And that's where I was at when my father died. And then I came back on emergency leave for his funeral, which was, I felt was very unfortunate, or maybe I should say very fortunate. When I came home, there was 13 military on emergency leave like me. They finally put us on a old war out airplane. It had bucket seats and we headed towards San Francisco. And I cannot tell you how long it took, but it was a whole day flying from Honolulu to San Francisco. It was cold, that plane had holes on them, as big as your fist, shot through the sides of it. But we still had to fly. And it was awful, like I said, it was awful cold. I, Stayed in the military for four years. I 
I should have stayed in the military, which I didn't. And if I would have stayed in the military, I wouldn't have had all these kids. And I enjoy them all. So what did you do after um, you were done in the military? What did I do? Mm -hmm. No more than I had to. <laughs> I was a construction worker. I worked construction most of my life. I enjoyed what I was doing. And I was working there when I went into the military. Tell me about um, how you helped your family working. What was that like? Well, you had to contribute part of your pay towards that family. That's how you survived in the world. You had to help your family. If you made five dollars that week, you had to donate four dollars. So that's how your family kept going. So how did you get in the tile laying business? <clears throat> I had a, I was working for a, a contractor here in Topeka, a general contractor, and he came and told me he had a friend that was needing some help in the tile business. And I went talked to this friend of his and got a job as a tile setter's helper. I think I was married about that time too. What, what made you want to start your own business? I got tired of working for the other guy and that's how I started my own and I was in business for 10 years. I've been a tile setter most of my life. Uh, that's all I know. Can you tell me about uh, some things that you want to um, tell your grandkids about life? Um, some lessons that you want to... I don't want them to live like I did. Because they'd be in trouble all the time. <laughs> so what do you, how do you want them to live? I want them to know. I don't want them to have to come up in life like I had to come up and <clears throat> I'm not saying I had a bad time in life but I didn't have the best. So ever since I could remember as a little kid I remember you putting up all the Christmas lights. Yeah I did. Uh, can you tell can you tell me uh, about like why you did it and how long you did it for? I just liked Christmas because I didn't have nothing like that at home when I was a kid. And even though they had Christmas lights and stuff up around the square at home, I put up the most lights and most decorations of anybody. When we decided to quit, I was putting up 25,000 lights, plus all the decorations, Christmas decorations went with it. I think probably one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my life was when I got out of the military and they kept wanting me to resign do it, I told them I could find life better on the outside, which that's what I did. And if I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have you. How did I meet your grandma? Yeah. There's a lot of stories. What stories have you heard? <laughs> I don't know, but I want to hear your side of the story. <clears throat> I had just got out of the military. 
I hitched the ride to Twin Falls, Idaho. That's where my oldest brother and one of my older sisters lived. I got up there and he says, I'm going to take you back to Kansas. And my oldest sister, or my older sister's husband says, I'd go too. Somebody gave me a quarter, so I just flipped him a quarter. And they both took me back to Kansas. And that's how I got to Kansas. Well, then, to answer the question this young man asked me, I went to the Naughty Pine, which used to be a restaurant. And it was probably about four seats in the wind. And that's where I met this young man's grandmother. We've been married for 57 years. I think that's what it is. Maybe it's more than that. But I wouldn't trade those years for anything. What are the secrets to a happy marriage? Listen to your wife. How have you and Grandma made it this far? How have we made it this far? Yeah. Because she finally thinks she's the boss. <laughs> Don't you erase that. Yeah.